Well, joining me now is the former Russian Prime Minister, Mikhail uh, Kasyanov. Thank you very much for being with us today. And I think my first question is, do Russians really believe that NATO posed this threat to Russia, as Vladimir Putin said uh, this morning, or t t the threat to Russian-occupied territories? Do Russians really believe that? Uh, I think I should admit that uh, the, the propaganda which lasted for, for a decade just created a feeling of, uh, I would say, of half of Russia's population that uh, uh, NATO created a danger, a uh, threat to Russia. Uh, not all the population, as Mr. Putin would like to, to, to see and believe, but uh, a lot, a lot of people uh, continue to believe that this uh, propaganda, this descriptions of all this threat is a reality. But that's why the, the society, in fact, is split now 50, 50 by 50 in Russia. And uh, uh, right now, just by the way, people started to considering and reconsidering their attitude to what is going on. So if 50% don't believe it and will increasingly question the war, is President Putin in trouble, do you think? Uh, I think, yes. He is already starting in a, in a trouble period of time. And in fact, uh, uh, he stolen the victory day, just Remembrance Day from Russians. It, it was family, family memory, and he stole this and, and created an instrument of propaganda uh, out of this victory day. And in fact, he's cynical, I would say, ec um, trying to, 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 uh, to make it equal the war in Ukraine with the war against um, uh, Nazi Germany. In the, in the Second World War, that is the, the, the crucial cynical attitude. I think I think that's already that's already clear that he uh, is very angry on everything was going around. He, and in today's speech, he didn't demonstrate any enthusiasm. And the main goal, he said, it's not the change of the regime. It is not, as he said before, so imagine denazification, but simply the protect uh, protection of people living in Donbass, which is also artificial uh, reasoning. And uh, he tries to change history. He tries to uh, um, uh, destroy the, the history in, in a way, in a way to, to somehow find justification of his brutal war against Ukraine. Yeah, Mikhail, that's really interesting. Do you think then that he knows he's miscalculated? Do his senior military officers uh, believe that he's miscalculated? I think that's already that's already the case, and that's uh, I, I think I already have feeling just watching Mr. Putin and his speech and, uh, and uh, temper and just, uh, uh, in fact, the style uh, of explaining what he wanted to explain, that's already, he already just losing the strength, I think. And uh, he was misled and he didn't expect such, uh, was, so I would say, bravery and um, uh, resistance of Ukrainians. Ukrainians appeared to be just too strong, very much strong to defending their land. And in fact, uh, he is briskly, his uh, short war uh, failed to, to take place. And now we're coming to the period of, uh, I would say, um, um, uh, the war of uh, economic and military potentials. And uh, just the ability of Ukrainians to defend their land and the military supplies by the Western countries. Uh, to Ukraine just allows uh, to, to expect that the upcoming future Ukraine could achieve, could get, uh, could get a decisive advantage, a military advantage on the, on the battlefield. And in this case, just beginning of um, uh, Putin uh, uh, era would uh, the, the start, beginning of the end of Putin's era would start immediately. So um, let's just be clear what you're saying there. Almost whatever happens now, whatever victory he tries to claim, you think this could well be the beginning of the end of, of Vladimir Putin? Yes. And today, Mr. Putin didn't announce any victory. He called for future victory. But today he said, we're fighting. We are fighting against Nazi, whatever just he, he imagined just in his explanation of the threat. But it's absolutely just in, in his mind. But it's nothing to do with the reality. And but there was no any statement about just uh, the positive achievements and uh, just not saying victory. He called for future victory. It means he already losing. He already already losing the strength. 
And I think just all these generals and officers who was watching and listening his this morning just already understood. They got this feeling already just a weakness. So what do you think then that President Putin will decide that a victory looks like, if you see what I'm saying? I mean, he had his, you know, he had his big ambitions at the beginning of this. What do you think he will be looking at now as a victory that he could walk away with and, and sell to the Russian people? Right. He, he just minimized his appetite, I would say, just um, uh, by, by achieving the, or creating a land corridor, a land corridor between Donbass and Crimea. Crimea for him is a crucial point. That's in, in, his, in his, I would say, uh, um, uh, I wouldn't say hard, but uh, uh, that is the major achievement he believes for, for his 25, 22 years of rule. And that's why that is very, uh, very sensitive, uh, extremely sensitive point, Crimea. And even in his speech, he mentioned today that there was a threat on our historical lands, including Crimea, he emphasized. He already said that it's like a historical land of Russia. That's another reason why um, uh, Russia annexed Crimea, why Putin annexed Crimea. Yeah, okay. For him, it's important. That's what his achievement, he, be, he believes that he will be, be able to sell to Russians that the land corridor okay. between Donbass and Crimea. Okay, thank you very much indeed, Mikhail Kassianov. Thank you. Appreciate thank your you. time.